All right, good reporting progress continued. And forgive me if I'm a little slow on, uh, on Zoom. I usually just go to meetings, I don't give meetings. So James, since you are online, can you see my screen? Hello, you're, you're muted, James. Yes, I do see your screen. I just wanna make sure someone can see my screen. I know it looks very busy, but uh, just bear, bear with me for a second. So on the left-hand side, I wanna share with you what I'm gonna to try to cover. Uh, Outlook Basics is my mailbox full. I'll demo it via Outlook Web. Why do I have to archive? Treat Outlook Mail like a physical mailbox. Uh, archiving from home, archiving from office. How to archive, I have a Mac. Security, Office 365, and uh, our help desk. And if we have time, uh, I'll, op I'll open up at the end of the meeting to questions. So uh, Outlook Basics is my mailbox full. Uh, what we find uh, most of the time is many users don't know how big their mailbox is. So I'm gonna show you how to find that out using just your internet browser, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Explorer. So here, let me see if I can pull, make this window bigger. Give me a second here. Let me make this one a little bit bigger for you guys. This is your stcc.edu website, as you can see. And I'm going to go to employee email, just log in myself. Nothing special here. Here's my email that's opened up. And to find out how big your mailbox size, you go to the top here and look for this icon that's the typical settings icon. If you click on the settings icon and you select options, a whole bunch of options are available to you on the far left-hand side. To find out how big your uh, mailbox is, let me see if I can figure this out. Is this under storage accounts? Or is it under general? Off, let's see, my account. Under my account. If you scroll down to my account under general, you'll see on the mailbox, on the server, I've used up a total of 1.34 gigabytes and my maximum size is three gigabytes. So for everyone on this call, in general, all faculty and staff have a maximum of three gigabytes before you start getting the message, my mailbox is full. In uh, previous years on older versions, you'll notice that it was smaller than that, maybe it was maybe a gig, uh, but with a new version of uh, Office uh, 2016 and the upgrades they did at the data center, it's now three gigabytes. So that's how you tell how big your mailbox is. And you can check it anytime you want, even before you get the message. But once you get the message, you can verify how much is left. Now, let's say you are close to your maximum. What happens is you will still be able to receive emails past that three gigabytes, but you will not be able to send emails out until you do an archive. So just an FYI on that. All right. So why do I have to archive the next item? So the, the key thing to archiving is to make sure your Outlook uh, is running as efficiently as possible. The bigger the archive file, the bigger the mailbox, the harder it is for Outlook per se to manage in terms of size. So you'll see you know, slowness, searching for things, documents, starts to lag as you get to the, to the larger archive files. So the, the, the more often you archive, the better, but typically you don't really need to archive uh, if you do it frequently, maybe just once a year. So I'll show you some of what I do. Uh, I only archive once a year. And the way I archive is I do year to year. So on December 31st of any year, I will do a full archive of the entire year from January 1st to December 31st and label that archive file that year. 
So if I were to do one for 2020, it would be called Archive Backup 2020. And once it's backed up, all my emails, calendar, sent items, deleted will be archived to that one archive file. And so basically, if I had to find something, all I had to think about is when did, what year did I send it? As, as opposed to doing an archive for everything for the last 10 years, the last five years. It's much easier to search for things when you have smaller archive files. And if you can break it down to quarter, yearly, semester, depending on what you do, it'll make your email work a lot more efficiently. Uh, I put here, treat Outlook Mail like a real physical mailbox. So your, your mailbox is in the cloud, as they call it. Basically, it's on a server at the data center in Miramar. And, and basically, if you, when I say physical mailbox, think of mail as when you receive mail and you receive your mailbox, if you don't do an archive, you just read the mail and put the mail back into the mailbox. Uh, for email, the same idea applies. If you read the email and you leave it in there, it's no different than having physical mail and you know not taking it out. Now, mail is a little different, can handle bigger files. So basically, the more you archive, the more efficient it gets, your mailbox doesn't get full. What version of Outlook am, am I on? Right now, the standard that we use on campus, as well as if you have a laptop, uh, is we install Office 2016 on your laptops, which means you have Word 2016, Excel, PowerPoint, as well as Outlook 2016. In the Office, you'll see two versions specifically, either uh, 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 Office 2013 or Office 2016. And I'll show you in a second, once I log in, uh, how to look that up. So I'm gonna close this window, give me one second. And go to the next screen. Let's see where I'm at. Now, here's the next step what we're doing archiving uh, from home. If you're archiving from home, the way you need to do this is you need to connect to your office computer. And there are a couple of ways uh, that, are, that, can, that can be done. Uh, but the software that you're using for faculty and staff is specifically something called Log Me In Client or Log Me In. If you want to go to that website, is logmein.com. If you are issued a laptop, whether it's by me or by Mesa Instructional, this is the standard software that we use to log into your remote computer, your remote office computer. So you see right now my logmein client window right here, as you can see, and I am going to log in remotely to my office computer. Oops, what's my password? Give me a second. I have too many passwords. All right. Your screen will look different from mine. Your screen will only show your office computer assigned to you. As an admin, I see everyone's computer and that's why you see all these here. So I'm going to go to my computer. This is me right here, METLO-MAC2. And just an FYI, I'm at home working right now and I'm working via a Mac computer. And that's the beauty of using uh, the software or remote software. Your computer at home is what you prefer to be with a Mac, a Windows computer, but when you connect, it can always be what the standard is, which is usually a Windows-based computer. So I'll click on that. See, it will connect for me today. And we'll log in. That's our domain. Let me connect. All right, I'm gonna try and make this window a little bit bigger so everyone can see. I know LogMe makes everything very, very, very small. 
So as you can see, I already have my Outlook already open. And I'll just start, I will just show you real quick. To see what version you're on, you would go to the file menu on top here. And then you go to Office account. It'll tell you what version we're using, Microsoft Exchange. And there's your version right here, Office Professional Plus 2016. If you're in your office or you remote in and you see that you're not on Pro 2016, you're on an older version of 2013, we can easily upgrade that for you. All you need to do is call the help desk and open a ticket and we can upgrade that Office Professional uh, up to the latest version, which is 2016. Okay, so, so that's that so far. So archiving from, from home. I already connected from to my office computer. Now I need to do an archive. And I'm gonna show you what my archive files look like. So here's what you see on top here you see my, my email address, tlsdccd.edu. That is the name of your mailbox. So I do scroll down, I'm gonna just close it. Give me a second here. Try to hit that arrow button here. Every, if you see your name in the Outlook, that is your mailbox right there. If you were to, and you can see on the bottom here, Back up 2010, 2011, 2013, 2014. So as you can see, every year I have one backup that, that shows all, all emails for the entire year. Currently, I have that saved to my, uh, my documents folder. Let me show you where they're, they're at. This PC, I'm just going to Documents, and I'm going to go to the Outlook folder. And as you can see, you can see those are all my archive files from 20, oh, 2009 all the way to 2020. You can see over time, our archives get, are, are getting a lot more bigger. Back in 2009, or actually let's get to uh, 2010, it was 466, uh, you know, megs. And then over time, as you see, it get one gig two, and all the way to two gigs, 2.7, all the way to three gigs. That's one year of email. And I'm not a power user in terms of email. I'm sure your email uh, archives or, or mailbox are much bigger. But let's say if you did not do an archive for five years, you just add these numbers together from 2020 to 2016, two gigs plus one gig plus two gigs, that's almost 10 gigs. You can see that the mailbox can get fairly big, very fast. And obviously at three gigs, it cuts you off. So right now I'm going to show you how to archive from scratch. So from here, I'm going to would you, file. Would you, would you please open up one of those uh, old archive files? Sure. Because I always have problems with the opening of it. So here it is. Backup of 2015. Here are all my deleted items. Here are all my inboxes and so on and so on. And they just come up when you... Yep. Okay. That's assuming that you did the archive correctly. So you don't see everything, then I'll explain why. Okay, thank and you. That's my next step. So we're gonna do an archive right now. So I'm gonna to go to file. These are the steps to do an archive. And you select mailbox cleanup, cleanup tools. Once you select that, you have an option to archive. Now, most people, what we see do is they will only archive their inbox. It's currently highlighted as inbox. So whatever date you give it, it will archive only that inbox. The correct way to do it is to highlight your name on top. When you highlight your name, everything below it, the subfolders and everything will be archived based on your requirements. So when my name is highlighted, it will back up inbox, draft, sent, delete it, 
archives everything in my mailbox that's currently on the cloud. If you just click on inbox, it's not doing a full archive. It's not really clean up that for the entire year. Calendar, you'd be surprised how much uh, information is in your calendar. So we're going to do an inbox, let's just say here. So we're just going to do a full backup. And then basically, you archive right now is currently 1231-2020. I'm going to start a new one. And I'm going to go, let's say right now is, what year is it? 2020 notes. Let's just say I do a back an archive from March up to March 31st, 2021. And then from here, I'm gonna name it. If the file does not exist, you can rename it from here and call it what you want. Right now, this one's already named 2020, but for, if I wanted to change this and create a new one, I would just change it to whatever you wanna call it here, to 2021. All mailboxes in, in the three letters PST. Just FYI, you can name whatever you want, but just like a Word document that ends in DOC or Excel document that ends in XLS, Outlook documents end in PST. So right now, what it's saying is archive this folder and all subfolders under my name, my profile, everything in the sub area, inbox, delete it, everything, including notes, everything. Why right? don't you scroll down here? Everything's backed up up here, okay? And if hit okay, they'll start doing its archive. We'll go back to the mailbox. You can see on the bottom here, it's archiving right now. As you can see, the new archive file it's called archives. It's not named what you see right here. So I have to rename that to backup 2021. And to do that, you would right click on the archives and say data file properties. Okay, from here, you would choose advanced. And from here, you can name it whatever you feel like it. And I'm gonna name this one Backup 2021, apply. Okay. Now you can see that bucket file's there. And as you can see, it's still backing up. I can scroll down and see how far it's at right now. So you just let it run until this is over, you know, I'll just let it run and do its thing. But right now it's backing everything up. In the past, many of you might have just backed up inbox, so when it shows inbox, but you can see it's finished backing up, delete it. Some of the archives I had already, and it's gonna continue to do everything on the entire list. Okay, so let me go back to the screen. Tony, we have a question in the chat. Sure. Is this for classified professionals? Wouldn't it be better to archive June 30th to June 30th so we can access the whole academic year? It's up to whatever you choose it to be. Uh, for me, it's year to year. Like for you, uh, June 30th, June 30th, 30th, 30th of every year works for you, then that works for you. It doesn't matter. It's, it's your setting. Does that help? because accountants would have a different type of setting that they might want to do it, but every person will have it set up a little bit differently. Some people might want to do it by semester, you know, they might name it uh, 21 spring, 2021 fall. It's just up to you how you want to do it, whatever works for you. Any questions so far on this? All right, so it looks like everything is backed up. As you can see, all folders are up to date. And basically okay. everything, um, yes. We have a hand up for Maggie. 
Yes. Uh, Hi, Tony. I have a question. So when you said um, to click on your name at the top, so the inbox, draft, sent, email, deleted, everything will be archived, right? Correct. Yes. Would that include calendar, yes. um, notes, tasks? Yes. And archives I'll show you. as well? Let me show you. If you were to look at, if I were to show you, let's say my 2019 backup. You can see it only shows you the mail stuff, but if you want to see what it backed up for calendar, you would need to highlight that. You had to open that calendar to show that calendar. If that makes any sense. So if you see there on the bottom here, you can open all types of calendars here. I'm trying to make this bigger. See all those years? When it does a backup. Yes, it backs up everything under that one PST file. But if you say you want to look at a calendar uh, that you backed up for 2018, you need to click on the box. This is backup of uh, 2016. Then you'll see, it'll show you what it's there. Same thing with notes. If you had backed up everything, it would be under your notes folder. And then you need to open up the notes whatever you packed up as. So if I want to look at the notes I did in 2020. Here are my notes in 2020. Uh, let's say 2019. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. But would that include also, you mentioned the archive. So archiving the archive? No. I'm confused about that one. It does not archive. Ar it just shows it down there. It only archives. And I'll do that. I'll show it to you one more time. So file, uh, mailbox cleanup. Mailbox, oops, wrong, wrong one. Give me a second. Mailbox cleanup, archive. So when you highlight this, remember, this is a tab. I'm not highlighting the previous archives. I'm just highlighting the current mailbox that's in the cloud. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, perfect. I can see it now, thank yeah, you. So, yeah, it shows all of those things, but it's not touching any of those. All it is doing is archiving this that's highlighted in blue, inbox, drafts, calendars, everything you got there. Uh, so that's the, that's the basics of archiving remotely. You have to start your LogMeIn account first. Once you have the connection, you would open Outlook, and then you would go to File and start archiving. The other thing to remember is, you know, the, the rule is, right now, as you, as you saw earlier, all my archive files I kept in documents under a folder called Outlook. This, all these files are on your, on my computer currently right now on the C drive. Uh, once these files have been created, you can move these files wherever you think is the safest for you. In other words, uh, what if you, your computer crashes, what do you do then? If your computer crashes in this scenario, I would lose all my archive files from 20, 2009 to present time and there will be no way to recover if your hard drive crashes because I have pulled all the mail from the server to my C drive, to my computer. That is a risk. Why do I do this? Because I already have a backup on an external hard drive and I copy, and, and all these files you see here, I copy to an external drive so that if 2014, if my hard drive were to fail today, I have all these backup files on an external drive because they're if they're important to me. That's one way to back up. The other way to back up is to save it to your H drive. And your H drive, everyone here at Classified should have an H drive. The H drive is your own personal drive. In other words, these are your own personal files uh, that no one has access to other than admin like myself. G drive is the shared drive for your department. H drive is your own personal files. So in my G drive, I, all these files you see here on the Mace IT staff is shared between me and Alex and me and Alex only. 
and your department would have similar setup as well. Now in my ACE drive, here's what a lot of people would like to do is back up their archives onto your ACE drive. This is, there are two ways you can, can do this. You can save the archive file directly to your ACE drive when you first do the archive, or you can do it after you create the archive on your C drive. And I'll explain that to you right now. You all remember that I created an archive folder, correct? And I called it uh, Backup 2021. In order to make sure that you don't corrupt the Backup 2021, because what I want to do is move this backup file that's currently on my C drive, sorry, to my ACE drive, you want to close it manually. I'm trying, see here it says close backup 2020-21. But before I do that, I'll go to data file properties to show you something. I want to show you under advanced where it's currently residing. In case you are looking for it, this is how you know. It's under Documents, Outlook, Backup 2020. Exactly where it's supposed to be under my C, my Documents, under Outlook. And here it is, 2020, 2021. And as you see, uh, we're, uh, it's about 7 and 27. Not too bad, but the year's not over yet. So right now, I'm going to close the archive file before I move it to H drive. So to do it, to close any archive that you currently have open, I would go data, I right click on it, I choose close backup 2021. Now you will not see 2021 in here because I closed it manually. Now I go back to my folders. I can now move this file somewhere else without hurting it or corrupting it. I can move it to an external drive. I can move it to my H drive. Right now, I'm going to move it to my H drive. I do right click. I do a copy. I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to go to H drive. And I might have a hot folder. I might not. I'll just put it under, let's say, a uh, new folder for now. I right click. I hit paste. Now, I did that on purpose. This is telling you there's an error because something's not closed correctly. If you do this, you might have a problem. The reason it's doing this is because my Outlook is still open. So if you see that message, now you know why. So before I can do a backup, I need to close Outlook completely. I'll go back to that folder, that the file under Documents. Uh, go back to Outlook. I'm going to go to Backup 2021 again. Right click, copy, and I go back to this PC. H. Back to my personal folder. No, not that one, not that folder, sorry. Something that's empty. Uh, let's just put it in 10. And I right click and it paste. See that error message didn't show up? So your archive, you get that error message, that's the reason because your Outlook's open. Now it's packed up to the H drive. Why do I want to do this? Anything you put in your H drive, is backed up by the data center. So if your PC crashes and your files are backed up to the H, it's okay. You have a backup. It will always be there. So what if the data center, what if the server crashes? Doesn't matter. The backup is backed up to a tape drive as well. So if things fail and you can't access it, the data center is responsible for anything that's on your H drive. I'm going to open Outlook one more time and reopen it from the H drive. So let's go to Outlook. There's my Outlook. So 
back to this here, as you can see, backup 2021 is not there because I closed it. I want to open it again, but from my H drive. I go to file. I go op open Outlook data file. Now, instead of going to my documents and going to, you know, Outlook, I have to go to H drive now. This PC, gotta go to H. And then let's see if I went to, I forgot where I put it now. Back up, nope. Yep. You just have to remember when you put it, that's all. Put it in temp. Temp. Thank you. There you go. So now, open it again. You can see now backup 2020 is back here again. If I right click on it and look at properties, I go to advance. You can see now instead of showing a C, it's showing as H. Okay. That's how you would back up your to see your H drive. Or if you wanted to, you can also back up the external drive and save it there as well and open it from your, your hard drive. Any questions? So I covered archiving from home, archiving from office. The next item, how to archive if I have a Mac. And when I say you have a Mac, you have a Mac at the office, not a Mac at home. Uh, it's not an easy way because uh, Office Office for Mac, the archive files are different. Uh, they're, they're in an OLM and not PST. Uh, so let's say, well, I have a problem now. My, my mailbox is saying it's full, what do I do? This is my recommendation. I don't know what Alex would do, but this is what I would say, have that person do. Uh, I would open a ticket uh, with the help desk at 7,000 and let them know. I have a Mac at the office and my mailbox is full. The easiest way to clean up that is for me in IT is to give you rights to a remote computer that is a PC and archiving it that way. That's the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, and once you do that, if you still need those files read on a Mac, then you can re-import it if you needed to back on your Mac, but I wouldn't do that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Microsoft didn't make it easy uh, to do archiving because they're not necessarily fully compatible. And that's why we have this problem. If you're using Outlook on a, uh, on a Mac, that, that could be a problem if your mailbox is full. That's the easiest way is to give you rights to a computer remotely to do an archive from a Windows-based computer and convert that PST file over. Any questions about that? Tony, we have a question from Mona. Hi, Mona. Hey, Tony, I have a question, but it's not re related to the archive. Is that okay to ask it now? Absolutely. Okay, I have a question about my remote. Um, so right now, uh, since I did not back to the office, I just tried once. My log me in, I guess in this in this setting has an option that I have to deactivate it to allow me when I go to the office to work at the office too, because right now it's my monitor is blank. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't show me anything. So can you help me how I can do that? So you're at home or you're at the office right now? Right now I'm at home. Yeah, uh, that's a login setting. Uh, if it's blanked out, it can, be, I mean, it can be different issues. And I can't walk you through that right now uh, because it can be different things, Mona. Because like, like if I wanted to have an option, if I choose one day to go to the office, work from the office, and also I still have an option that I can do the log me in. Right. When you're in the office, when you hit the space bar, the enter, your screen should wake up and give you full control. It did not. It and just... if it does not, you can do a reboot of your computer to release it sometimes. So basically, if you're in the office, if you're at home, before you go to the, the office, you want to disconnect from log me in. Okay. 
That's my recommendation. Disconnect from lobby. And once you disconnect, and once you're in the office, the lobby is no longer connected to your computer remotely. When you say disconnect, do you mean literally log out? Yep. Correct. If you're at home and you're planning to go into the office, just close log me in uh, by clicking on the, the, the X on the top right hand corner uh -huh. and then close it all out. Okay. Okay. And we can talk more about this if you need to, but the help desk can also tell you the same thing too. If you have, if you are seeing a black dot when you get to office, well, turn completely turn off and log off or log me in at home. Turn off your laptop and then go into office. Don't leave it on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about security now. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of security in the news about uh, you know companies like the meat mark meat meat place being hacked, scripts being hacked. And a lot of times uh, this happens uh, because we accidentally open emails that might have some sort of malware stuck to it. Uh, so the recommendation when using Outlook is, if you're using Outlook at home, uh, the recommendation is you open it via remote using LogMeIn. Because let's say you open a file uh, using, uh, let's say, Outlook Web. And that file accidentally contains a virus. Well, that file is opening on your home computer, your home personal computer. We don't, we can't support your personal computers. And if it gets infected, you're pretty much in trouble. But let's say uh, if you remote in using Lock Me In, and use Outlook, and you open a file, an attachment, and it's a virus, and it's infected. Yes, you might have lost everything on your computer, possibly, or IT must do something very drastic to save it, but you don't put your personal computer at risk. It's an extra step. I know it's, it's a lot of more work to connect remotely as opposed to open an Outlook web, uh, but it does protect your own personal computer because your personal computer contains photos, pictures, videos, all types of personal stuff, and all it takes is one wrong attachment and you're kind of toast. The other thing you can do, best practice, uh, when you're using Outlook Web at home, uh, don't open any attachments. Open attachments only when you're remoting into your own office computer. Uh, you know, it's a lot more work. I know it is, uh, but that's just the recommendation I would give. If security is a concern, especially uh, when you're using your own personal computer. Now, if you're using your laptop, that the school issued, uh, so what if your laptop gets uh, infected? We can fix that, not a big deal. But if you do use Outlook Web on your home personal computer, that is a risk. Office uh, 365, you all been hearing a lot about Office 365. I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail what, what that is. Uh, Office 365 is a cloud-based, theoretically a cloud-based office solution. In other words, you can use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook on Microsoft's cloud or on, my, on the school's cloud. And let me bring something up to you real quick. I'm trying to find an email. Hold on. I'm trying to see something. There it is. Let's see. I'll describe what this is. Office 365 for teacher, faculty, and staff. There are different types of solutions. Office 365 A1 and A3, that's the ones we will talk about. All faculty, staff have access to 365 A3. And what you, what that, the difference is A1, A3, a1 only allows you to use Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook on the cloud. It does not download the actual application of Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. A3 allows you to download Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. So what that means is with your school email address and your school email password, 
you can log into Office 365 and you can actually theoretically download all those and use it on your own personal computer uh, as long as you are a full-time faculty. Why are we not advertising this uh, to everyone? This is great, fantastic. You also have one terabyte of uh, storage on, on the A3 account. So instead of putting an H drive, theoretically, you can put it on, uh, on the Microsoft 365 one terabyte OneDrive. We're still learning on this. Uh, we, uh, from an IT perspective, one terabyte sounds really nice, but think of one terabyte like a Dropbox or a Google Drive. There is no uh, guarantees that we can give you that one day there's, there's, there's server crashes and you lose everything in there. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, there is no availability if it crashes or you have issues. You can't call the help desk saying, I lost 50 files. I saved it on Office 365 on Ace Drive and it's all gone now. The only thing that's backed up is on the H drive. This is used at your own risk. It's just like a Dropbox. It's one terabyte. So use it uh, based on your comfort level. Any questions about this? What are we gonna? Sorry, I, you, you cut off there. Where we can find the Office 365A3? You don't have to do anything other than go to uh, log into Microsoft Office, you know, log in Office 365. It's just office.com as you can see. Uh -huh. I click on that. I'm already logged in as you can see. You can see my logos. But if I were to log out, And then refresh. Pick an account. Actually, I'll go back one more, see if I can do it from, from the beginning. All my cookies are saved, so that's why everything's there. Hello, Tony, welcome back. This is pretty standard. Sign in. And then from here, you always want to pick work or school account, not personal account, work. My email's already been saved in the cookies and that's why it goes straight to password. And I type in my email password in here. And as you can see, here are my own documents, Word, Excel, blah, 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 all the things. Uh, top right side, top right hand corner is how you would install Office. Again, like I said, this is on, on you to figure things out. From our standpoint, this is on your own personal computer. We only give you so much help, but this is how you would install Office on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone. If you run into issues like Word, Excel, again, that would be on you to try to figure that out. But if you are using the computer at Office, we are still using and supporting Office 2016, Outlook 2016. Any questions? That's, let me see if I covered everything. I think oh, that's- Do we have a question in the chat? Sure. It says, uh, besides log me in, can we use other remote access software tools like Chrome Remote Desktop? No. Uh, the only one that's currently supported right now is log me in. Uh, Chrome Remote Desktop is a, I use it myself for personal use, but you don't want to use it for business use uh, because uh, we want to focus on just one. If you run into issues, we can't support you on those. Plus, you need to install certain software for it to be remote accessible. So that computer in the office, you install the client side uh, Chrome tools. It could flag at our data center, and then we have to remove it. Because the only one that's currently allowed 
is the logging unit. Any other questions? Honey, I have a question about the calendar. Yes. Um, so when you share your calendar uh, with others, I know you have access to give them full detail or the just um, view. Mm -hmm. But if you decide to give them full detail and then you decide to just, okay, now I need to change that to something else, how you will do that? So just, just FYI, I'm not, a, I'm not a subject matter expert in Outlook. So that feature, while I can show it to you, I might not be the perfect person to do it because I don't use it that often or ever. So basically from a calendar standpoint, uh, if I want to share, as you can see, I don't have any shared calendars. No. <laughs> But because you're a power user with calendars, it would be under here under sharing parameters or permissions. Mm. And from here, you need to decide who you're going to share to permission wise, which ad users and what rules you want to give them. This is the screen that you would do it from. But you, you do have an option to change it later on. Absolutely. If you are the owner of the calendar, only you have the rights to it unless you give permissions to others to have rights to it. Got it, thank you. Okay. Honey, we have a couple questions in the chat. The first is from Kristen. She said, if we um, have a mailbox with less storage than three uh, gigabytes, is it possible to request an upgrade to three gigabytes? Most people should have a, a, a minimum of three because that, was, that rule has changed maybe six months ago. So if you don't have three, I would call the help desk at 7,000 and ask them, why is my mailbox not three? Everyone should have a minimum of three. That's my understanding. Are you still at one? Is that what it is showing? You said it's 2.2. .2. Yeah. So. There could be, the other reason it could be is maybe you're using uh, not Outlook 2016, but I doubt that's the problem. You're on Outlook 2013, once you upgrade to 2016, it'll work, but I would give the help us a call to see why your mailbox is not three, three gigabytes. My understanding is everyone's mailbox was increased to three uh, once they moved over to Outlook 2016. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And then Lynn has a question. She wants to know how much storage space is in the H drive and the G drive. Well, that's a good question. And I do not know off the top of my head. Uh, I would like to say 50, but I'm just guessing right now. I will call again the help desk at 7,000 because they manage those, those G and H drives. They can tell you exactly by department and by user how big those, those uh, H drives are. And is it possible to re request an increase in storage space for those? You can request an increase of the size of the mailbox, uh, but typically they don't do an increase unless you're at the Dean level. That's my understanding. Or you have a very specific job that requires it and your Dean or your VPA or VPI is requesting it for you saying, because of this person's job duties, they need a larger mailbox. If you're, the, if you're one of the admins for the dean, obviously you can make the request and it shouldn't be a problem. But most in general, if you're just a classified staff, uh, that's the size they give you. Uh, you need an additional approval to get bigger, uh, bigger sizes of H drive. Um, our list would like you to show again how to see what version we have. A version of, um, of Office? Outlook? Yeah, I oh, think Outlook. Okay. So here's Outlook. I already have it open. Uh, here's Mail. Now remember, this is Outlook on a Mac. It's a little bit different. But let me see if I can do it. Sorry, I just got lost here for a second. One second. Log back in. So 
So you would go to file and you go to office account and it'll tell you right here, professional 2016. And then Lynn wants to know if you could show us again um, of how much storage we have on our Outlook email. Sure. I will open a site here. This is Outlook Web, OWA, the web version using, I'm currently using Safari or Chrome, I think. Right now I'm using Chrome. You go to the settings, that one that looks like a wheel on the top right hand corner, and you go to options. From there, you click on general, my account, scroll down. Remember my, my, my mailbox was 1.7 gigs, but because I did an archive of 2021, it's now only 780 me megabytes. So I reduced it once I did an archive. 